Hey guys, hope you're all good today. <clears throat> Previously we've seen how to make mappings, how to import sources and how to import trans uh, targets. We created three kinds of mappings. Firstly, we transfer data from a database table to another database table. For that we made a new target database user where we created new tables and we loaded data into it. The second kind of transformation was where we loaded data from a database table to a flat file. For that we made a flat file and imported it into the Informatica mapping. And the third kind was loading data from a flat file to a database table. For that we made a new table in the target database. We also made a new source file which we put in some dummy data. So uh, sh we should move on and start off with executing the workflows, executing the mappings actually. So to execute a mapping, we need to create a session where we will create, where we will transfer data from the source table to another source table, which is the employees table. So we should start with it. And to do that, let's go on and to the power center designer informatica 9.6.1 client power center client power center designer okay connect to the repository <coughs> administrator the password is oracle okay open the trainings uh, folder and expand the mappings and let's open the mapping for employee employee yeah so this is the mapping that we need to create a session for and we want to execute it and test it so let's click on this w this is the workflow ma manager and this is the monitor and this is the repository manager so we can click on workflow mon manager from here and we'll open directly to the folder which we were currently working in with the designer so this is a task developer here we develop different tasks such as sessions command lines everything this is a worklet designer multiple tasks gather up and make up a worklet and then those worklets can be used in the workflow and the workflow in the workflow designer we create the workflow using tasks and design uh, worklets but for now let's just use the workflow and let's create this When we create a new workflow, we need to give it a new name. So we'll give it a wf underscore employee underscore employee. Okay. We don't need to change anything else over here. So let's just click OK. And you can see that a start button has uh, been created, which shows the start of a workflow. So here is a taskbar which shows different uh, tasks, such as session command, email, decision, assignment, timer, control, event weight, event trace, worklet, link tasks, session configuration, scheduler. We'll come back to everything. So for now, let's just select a session. When you click it here, it shows you all the mappings that are available in the folder, which you can use for sessions. So we need to make a mapping for the employee uh, session. So let's select that. Double click on the session. To open its properties here you can see we can rename it so just to follow the conventions let's remove this M from here and keep it as s underscore employee employee okay we'll come back to the other uh, options later for now let's just see this option where we need to create source connection values as well as the target connection values these will connect the source and the target to their respective databases. So we need to create this, uh, the connections first. So let's go to connections, select relational as it is a relational database that we're accessing, select Oracle from here and then click new here. Let's name it. We first created for the HR source. So let's name it at HR. Username is HR. The password is also HR and the connect string is oracle <clears throat> okay 
okay and other than that the options that we have are the code page i'll just let it be as uh, ms latin the default we can use any other for chinese japanese characters as well utf8 is the one which is used uh, currently or mostly so for the training purpose let's just let it be as ansi so click ok and we have a new connection made here we need to create another one for the target database so let's click new name it as target the username should be target as well and the password is target as well and the connection string as usual is oracle so let's click ok let this be as ANSI the default one click ok we have two connections now click close now let's go back to the properties of the session double click on the session Now first select the fail parent if task fails. This option means that if the task fails, the whole workflow will fail. So we'll come back to this option later and I'll discuss in detail what will happen if you don't select this. So let's just let it be for now. And let's go to the properties tab. Here now we need to select the source connection and the target connection as well. So let's set the first source connection first select HR click OK similarly for the target database let's go here select target and then click OK again now we need to okay so let's move on to other options now uh, this is the session log directory where all the session logs are stored the PM session log DIR this variable I'll show you where this is later and this is the right backward compatibility session log file we will just check this for now and i will tell you what this does later so let's move on to the config objects tab now because the work here is done okay once we scroll down you can see that we have the option of save session log by we're sa saving session logs by sa session runs and for this option we'll select how many session logs we want so let's put it as five for now and that would be it from this tab let's move on to the mapping tab now here we need to select the source and we need to set the database connection over here as well so let's do that click over here and you can see there are two ways to set the session database either we can select hr or we can select the variable which we've set earlier over here as dollar source points to the HR database and dollar target points to the target database. So let's come back here, click here, and either select HR or write dollar source over here. Okay. Similarly, set the database connection for the target. Click here either select target or use a connection variable which is dollar target which points to the target database click ok now let's set some other see other properties of the session source you can see that we have some other things such as pre sql post sql sql query source filter over here we'll see what these are later in the coming videos let's let them be for now in the target uh, properties there are two types of load types uh, first is bulk and then there is normal we'll select normal for now and we'll come back to this later and see what both difference between the both are second check the option for truncate target table option here this means that the target table is always emptied before being loaded so let's scroll down further and see what we have okay we have pre sql post sql over here as well so we'll come back to these later for now i think we're done we're good for now so let's just click ok and apply and then click ok yeah now we need to connect the start button with the session so let's use a link task for that click on that click on the start button and drag it and connect it to the employee session we're good
to do, we're good to go now. So arrange horizontal, it's all arranged. We need to save the workflow before we can run it. So let's save it. And we can see that the employee workflow is valid. We need to run this workflow. So right click on the session and click on start workflow. This will automatically take you to the workflow monitor where we can see that the task is being run. Okay, you can see that the session is running. So is the workflow. Session succeeded and the workflow succeeded as well. Let's click on the task view and we can see here that this session and the task have been succeed successfully executed. We can see session properties. So right click, get run properties. Over here you can see <clears throat> the instance name was the session's name. It was a session. Integration service was Infra Training IS, the node's name, the start and end times, and that status was succeeded. It shows you further that the source success rows were 107 and the target success rows were 107 as well, and none failed. In this tab, you can see a complete detail of how many rows were applied, affected, or rejected from the source and the target. So we can see that complete 107 uh, target source rows were loaded to the target table. We can also see get the session properties, session logs, if there are any errors. And right click get session log. Here you can see everything that has been done. How it was loaded, how connections were made, what time they were done. If there are any errors you can see here you can debug them from here and fix them. For example you can see from here that how many rows were taken from the source and how many were put into the target. Okay, to verify our session, let's visit the target database and see if the rows have been loaded or not. Let's open the SQL Assistant. Connect to the ODPC data source, which you made earlier, which should be test one. Okay, click connect and connect as the username target. Password is target as well. Click OK. Select, sorry, select count steric from employees. execute this and you can see that 107 rows are in the uh, target table let's see if the rows are fine or not select steric from employees execute this and yes perfect we have loaded the source data to the target table and this here you can see that our work is done the monitor we could see how the sessions were run, how everything was done. We can debug it from the session logs. We can see the exact amount of rows that were fetched and loaded into the target. And in the following videos, we'll be discussing session properties, uh, such as the fail if, uh, fail parent if task fails and everything like that. So stay with us and thank you for